When I started working with Photoshop, I felt so intimidated by other designers. I had no previous experience and no training. I saw that work and I thought, man, these guys are amazing. How am I ever gonna catch up? I didn't feel confident about my own work. So I tried to close the gap by working harder and longer hours every single day. But this backfired because I got burnt out after a while. So I changed my approach. I decided to work smarter and that I had to make the most out of my time. How? I got faster. Now, working faster doesn't come naturally or with experience as you might expect. It's a conscious effort. It's a decision to use each project to get better every day. It's not actually that hard. It just takes practice and being willing to take the time to learn some of the not so fancy stuff. By getting faster, I also worked more efficiently. This means I could focus more on the project itself rather than figuring out how to do something in Photoshop. This is one of the secrets of creative professionals. In the next exercise, I'll show you some tips and tricks to improve your speed using a simple, fun activity. Let's get to it. Open up the file called Rectangles Initial that's attached to the course. Here you'll find a bunch of rectangles of different shapes and sizes. But once you organize it, it's gonna look like this. Now again, this doesn't seem that interesting, yet I strongly believe these not so glamorous projects help you get faster. You practice several times and you get better at these core techniques that professionals use every single day, myself included. And when you jump into a real project, you can rely on your muscle memory to get the job done fast. Click on the Move tool, hotkey V, and make sure this Auto Select option is unchecked. Make sure Layer is selected, not Group. Now we can start working. To select a layer, you basically have two options. The first one is you can click on the layer in the Layers panel, which highlights it so you know you have it selected. Click on another layer and now that one is selected. The trouble with this method is you don't know exactly which layer you have picked up, unless you move your cursor over the canvas, you click and you drag. Now you can obviously see which layer you picked up. Ideally, you could label each layer with a more appropriate name. As you can see, Photoshop allows you to use the same name for multiple layers. But even if you call them big blue rectangle, medium blue rectangle and so on, it would still be a pain to identify them. That's why I suggest you use the second way of selecting a layer, from the canvas. Hold the control key, that's the command key on the Mac, and click on a layer. Notice the layers panel. It's now selected and of course you can move it about. Control click another layer and now that's selected. This is very easy, but it's very powerful as well. I use it every day in all my projects. So let's get on with our task. Start with a blue shape. Move the biggest rectangle somewhere towards the right side. Now identify the next one. Here it is. Select it with the control click technique and move it above it. You might notice Photoshop will try to help you position it in the middle of that other shape. That snapping action is actually really useful. Moving on to the third blue shape. Move it over and here's the next point. Notice the layer is being hidden and that's because it's underneath them. The stacking order in the layers panel is from top to bottom. I'll double click this third shape and place an X next to this name so you can easily track it. Now let's select the previous blue shape. Notice it's higher up in the layers panel. Because of that it's hiding this bottom one. As for the other one, that too is higher than the X one. Because of that we can't proceed. But we can easily fix that by clicking and dragging this layer above these other two. It's as simple as that. Let me do it again. To reposition a layer in the layers panel, you click it, hold and you drag it into another position. A layer is like a transparent piece of tracing paper. A bunch of them overlap, like in our case here. If the top one is filled with a color, it will obviously hide all the other ones. To demonstrate the point, let me add a huge rectangle on the canvas. I'll also change its color by double clicking its thumbnail. Now if I place it at the top of the stack, obviously it will hide everything, because it's no longer transparent. If I move it at the bottom, 
we can see all the other elements because of their stacking order. So the takeaway is that you have to make sure that you stack your layers correctly from top to bottom. Let's continue with the next shape. I'll remove this layer by tapping the delete key. Okay, continue with the next shape. This is too far down in the layer stack as well. Move it up and now we can continue with the final shape. This is quite small, but it's a great way to increase your precision. Place it right in the layers panel. Then focus on the canvas. Overall, that's one third of our exercise handled. Let's move on to the green one. You now know that control clicking allows you to select that specific layer. But what if you want to select more at a time? Well, you control click the first one and then you control shift click the other ones. To confirm you selected another one, check the layers panel. And indeed, it's all good. Let me select the third one. Again, control shift click. This technique allows you to clean up a messy project in no time at all. But say we only want two layers selected, not three. Well, it goes both ways. You control shift click to multi select, you control shift click to deselect. See how easy it is? The layers panel is always gonna tell you the truth. Please practice this hotkey combination through this exercise. You could, of course, just move them one at a time by using the first technique, but make it a workout by pushing yourself to multi select. Another thing that professionals do is they clean up their layers panel. I'd like to see five blue layers then five green ones, and finally five red ones. This is how they should look like at the end of it. I'll finish up arranging the green shapes. Same techniques as before. Control clicking with or without shift. In real projects, these shortcuts are indispensable. I can't stress it enough. Okay, last column, last technique. In certain cases, you'll have tens of layers that you need selected. Clicking on them might be a pain, especially if they're tiny. Here's my last selection technique. Make sure the background layer is locked. You can tell by this lock icon on the right side of it. If you don't have it, just go at the top of the layers panel and click here. That will lock it. Okay, now go over the canvas, hold the control of the command key on the Mac and drag out the box. Have a look at the layers panel. I won't let go of my mouse click just yet. Notice how everything that's inside it gets selected. This is how you quickly grab lots of layers. Once you let go, you'll have them selected and you can move them about or do whatever you want with them. So again, you hold the control key and you drag out a box. You don't have to include the entire layer inside it to select it. If a small part of it is inside the box, you will grab it. So that's the third technique. While I work in the background, let me tell you, this selection technique has saved me countless times. When working on large projects, especially when you're a part of a team, you're handed PSDs that are a complete mess. Before you get to work, you have to clean up both the layers panel and the canvas. This is why this exercise is a nice warm up before you jump into any real world projects. Okay, let's do a quick recap. Before you do anything, select the move tool and uncheck this option. All right, now focus on the layers panel as I go through them. Technique number one, control click the layer from the canvas. Anything you click on gets selected. Technique two, control shift click to select multiple layers. Just like that. If you wanna deselect, use the same combination. Straightforward, no headaches. Finally, technique three, only if the background layer is locked, you hold the control key and you drag out the box. Anything that's inside it will be selected. If you want to recap, please see the attached workbook. Please pause the video right now and see how you do. Perform the exercise with all three techniques. Get a stopwatch and time yourself on the first go, then repeat the exercise a couple more times. Write down your time and share it in the comment section. It's not a competition, we're in this together, but it's nice to see how everybody gets faster with each go. Learning shortcuts like these allowed me to focus on creating my project, not figuring out how Photoshop works, which used to take up a lot of my time. Now my clients praise me for my speed. In today's economy, it's a huge advantage. There's no secret at getting better at Photoshop. 
It takes dedicated time and practice, and you have to be smart about it. These types of exercises will help you out tremendously if you recognize that value and keep on practicing. And as you do that, you'll not only get better, but faster as well.